Welcome to Design Your Life with Sandy. I am your host, Sandy Yang. I am a certified brain rewiring coach and human design expert. In this podcast, we talk about becoming the most kick ass, unstoppable version of yourself, building a life of alignment and flow that you deserve, and taking a holistic approach to health and wellness. Don't forget to connect with me on Instagram at Sandy Yang Wellness. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. I just have to start by saying how truly grateful and blown away. And I can't thank you enough for all the love and support you've shown me since I launched this podcast. And it's time to pay it back. I am doing a huge giveaway. This giveaway winner will receive a free 90 minute session with me. This can be human design or brain rewiring. So 90 minutes, your pick. This is huge. Usually my sessions are 60 minutes. So this will be a deep dive. You will walk away with so many takeaways and actionable tools. If you have enjoyed the first two episodes, then this giveaway is perfect for you. Okay, so here's how to enter. Follow me on Instagram at Sandy Yang Wellness. Like the post regarding this giveaway. Tag two friends in the comments. Write a five-star review on Apple Podcasts for Design Your Life with Sandy. DM me a screenshot of this review. And if you want a bonus entry, actually, this is huge. If you share a screenshot of you listening to this episode or any episode of this podcast in your Instagram stories, don't forget to tag me so I can see it. You get five extra entries. You did not hear that wrong. I said five. So you get a total of six entries. That's literally it. The winner will be announced on January 30th. That is a Saturday. And that's all. Good luck, everyone. Okay, so today's episode is all about your human design inner authority. And I just want to get those episodes out earlier. So whoever wants to start living their human design, incorporate this information, here's the juice and you can start running with it. And without further ado, let's get into it. In episode two, we talked about the different archetypes and their strategies to bring in more aligned opportunities for themselves. Just as a recap, you're either a generator, manifesting generator, projector, manifester, or reflector. And the reason why authority is such a important part of living your human design is that it's like your loudest inner voice. The voice that helps you make your best decisions. And I don't really know how many decisions an average person makes in a day, but there are so many advice out there like, hey, listen to your gut or what does your intuition say? Or something like, oh, you got to sleep on that. So which one is right? The answer is it depends. I know that's the most annoying answer ever, but the whole listening to your gut literally does not work for me. I once had a mentor who teaches about this stuff and I was just like, okay, I want to, but it doesn't tell me anything. It was so frustrating because I was like, well, guess I just don't have intuition or I try to be very in the moment, like, when I feel really amped up by a certain option, I just grab it because it felt really right in that moment. Unfortunately, the excitement or the passion is not necessarily always there the next morning. And I'm just like, what the heck did I just do? Okay, so I really love talking about inner authority because it clears this whole thing up for people. Not everyone is meant to listen to their guts, you know? And if you haven't looked up your chart yet or you don't know what your authority is, check out the show notes. Everything you're going to need is over there as well as 
some resources I have created that is super digestible and will reinforce your understanding. And if you haven't listened to episode 2 yet, listen to that first before you listen to this one. Anyways, okay, so your authority is simply what you listen to within yourself to follow your strategy. You know how people say you always have the answer within you? You literally do, and that is your authority. It is like your reliable inner voice that you can always lean on. There are seven different authorities, and most people are either emotional, sacral, or splenic. I myself am emotional authority, and this doesn't mean you are a super emotional person. Everyone can be emotional. If you look at your entire human design chart, the triangle on the right hand side, it is colored in. This means you have a defined emotional center. Emotional decision makers are meant to sleep on their big decisions. You know how sometimes you are really emotionally excited about something and you want to just say yes to it right now? Let's talk about a shopping example. Let's say you're, you know, browsing online and you see this new bag. It is kind of pricey and you're like, wow, this is shiny and cool and just great. And you have to have it. You will buy this and life is going to be great. You kind of feel really emotionally high and you just really want to get it right now. But it's kind of out of your budget. You can afford it, but it feels financially irresponsible. So this is something you might want to sleep on and see how you feel in a day or two. At least sleep on it, you know? And if you still feel good about this thing, this decision, you can move forward with it. However, if you did the opposite, you bought it. Just like when you saw it, you were so excited about it. Sometimes things can get kind of icky because maybe two days after, like you buy it on Monday, it gets shipped to you on Wednesday. And when it comes, you're like, I don't want it anymore. I don't know why I bought it. I don't know why I was so excited. The excitement is no longer there. So for the emotional decision maker, you almost look at the world, you view the world with colored lenses. You have your own emotional wave. Sometimes you can wake up super happy for no particular reason, or you can be kind of moody for no real reason. You just kind of want to be alone. And the key for you is to make your bigger decisions When you are at a place feeling calm, cool, and collected, emotional clarity is really important. Like when you make a decision from that place, you feel way more grounded than you would be when you are making a decision out of an emotional high. And that is a good thing. I know this doesn't sound as sexy as making decisions in the moment, like a sacral decision maker would, but think about how many times have you quote unquote missed out on an opportunity or waited, but then something even better came along. It's like the waiting period, the two or three days is like aligning you with divine timing, which is pretty cool. And Going back to the emotional wave that we mentioned, you have a wave. Sometimes you feel really emotionally high, other times you feel kind of low. And perhaps you already noticed this about yourself. Let's say you are with a group of people and you are feeling kind of moody and you are trying to brush it off, you don't say anything. And people can pick it up. Everyone's like, hey, are you okay? Anything wrong? Energy is contagious, so emotions are contagious. It is so healthy for you to, obviously when you're, you know, really happy, really bubbly, everyone kind of 
get a mood lift because of you. But when you are feeling low, feeling angry, it is so healthy for you to, well, first of all, feel your feelings. This is nothing personal to you. This is just your emotional wave doing this thing. Remember when we talked about looking the world through color lenses? When you're on high, you're, everything is like rose gold and shiny. When you're in a low, it's like everything is blue, everything is gray, everything is looking kind of shitty and you just want to say no to things, right? And yeah, it's healthy for you to acknowledge that This is not your identity. This is just something you feel once in a while. Sit with it. Feel it so you can move on. Process that negative emotion. If you're really sad, fucking cry it out. And if you're angry, go do like 10 burpees or something to move that energy out of your body. Punch a pillow, scream into a pillow. Healthy release of emotions is key here. I feel like this is an example that a lot of us can relate to. If you have ever worked for somebody, there's probably at least one time you wanted to write an angry email to them and you do it. But after you write it, you are like, wow, okay, I don't feel angry anymore. It's like, I don't really know why I was so mad. That is your release right there. You don't have to actually yell at the person. Um, that is an example of how you can release anger. There are four types of emotional waves. And you can look it up on your human design chart. We're not going to go into this. But general rule, sleep on your bigger decisions. Feel your feelings, especially the low one. What I feel like when we are on an emotional high, we sort of expect that to be the norm or we want it to stay there forever. But remember, you cannot appreciate the highs if you don't have the lows. And feelings remind us that we are having a human experience. How fucking boring would it be if we just stay at the same emotional place? As a recap, feel your feelings, process your feelings, make decisions at a place of calm, cool, and collected, sleep on them two or three days, then you're solid. For what you want to eat for lunch, doesn't have to be so deep. Let's move on to the sacral decision maker. So this is only available for generators and manifesting generators. This is very similar to your strategy. Whenever you are presented with options or decisions, tune into your body. Are you feeling physically expanded or contracted? Are you physically energized to go do this thing? So the sacral authority is kind of what people usually refer to as, oh, I'm feeling a full body, yes, or I'm following my gut. Basically a visceral feeling. So... It's pretty real time, but if you are an emotional authority generator or a manifesting generator, it's like your sacral and your emotional piece play together. They are a decision-making team, but the emotional authority calls the shots. So if you're a generator with an emotional authority, your gut is saying yes. But you do want to check in two days after if your gut still says yes. Going back to the emotional piece, it's like time is your best friend. Let's move on to splenic authority. This one is only available to projectors and manifestors. And the spleen is very much about survival and instincts. You can rely on your innate sense of instincts always. It is something that is always available and consistent to you. So the splenic authority person is very good at sensing danger. Think about animals. How do they know which berries to eat and which way to fly? It is like a subconscious knowing. Very nervous system based. 
your general rule is that everything is a yes. Everything is automatically good to go, unless you're sensing creepy vibes, danger, things are not gonna work out. So it's like you have instincts: what will work out, which way to go, which way not to go. If someone is your friend or enemy. That being said, it is so important for you to take care of your nervous system because this is what tells you if something is a yes or a no. And when you're really stressed out, if you're stressed out all the time and your nervous system is always on fight or flight mode, then everything is going to feel like a no, right? So if someone asks you to Go over to their party, and you feel creepy vibes from him or her. You're very much like no thanks. And how do you trust that? This applies for all kinds of authorities, but how we develop strong trust is when we recall a time when your authority was screaming at you, "No, we don't want to do this," and you're like, "Well, logically, I don't see why not," and then. You go with it, but then it really messed up, or something went wrong, and then you're like, "Well, fuck! I should have just listened to my own authority, whichever one that may be." Let's move on to the ego authority. So, the ego authority is available to projectors and manifestors. If you are ego authority and you pull your chart, you'll notice that the bottom half of your chart is. White.、Um, the shapes are not colored in. That means they are undefined. And I will link an Instagram post about undefined centers. But basically, where you are white, you are like taking in conditioning in the theme of that center. So if you are undefined emotional, you are more prone to. Feeling other people's emotions, you can be empathetic in this area. Empaths are not always picking up people's emotions. It can be people's fears or worries, but you get the idea. This is where you can be a little bit of a sponge to other people's influences. Okay, so if your ego authority. You can take in a lot from your environment, and it is so healthy and important for you to be selfish. So, what do you want? What will make you more successful? What will take you further? Is so important that your heart is in it, and this is like the ego center is not really like the ego we talk about. Like you are making this from an egoic place is. Not that the ego center in human design is very much about willpower, worthiness, willfulness, that kind of vibe. If you have a defined ego center in human design, you naturally have a more consistent source of willpower and sense of self worth. You're very much like, hey, this is me. I'm here to make impact and you know be successful. You can be any type, but a reflector to have a defined ego center. You can have an undefined ego center and still have a fuck ton of self worth. It's just the defined ego center. People naturally feel it. They are less prone to wanting to make big promises to prove their self worth, like seeking it externally. So yeah, if you're ego authority, always check in with yourself. Do I want this? Do I have the energy for this? Be really honest here. Do I want this? Will this benefit me? And whatever you say yes to will have a lot of longevity. The next one is the self-projected authority. So this is only available to projectors, and. You have a defined identity center or G center. This is about direction and sense of self. You naturally know if something is for you or not for you. Where you want to go in life, 
you are naturally meant to express yourself through talking it out. So when you have a decision to make, it is very healthy for you to either speak about it to a friend, have this friend that you really trust just hold space for you and ask you questions to prompt your thinking and trust that you are processing when you just let yourself talk and the answer will naturally unfold for you. If you don't feel comfortable doing this with others, you can voice journal, voice memo, just talk it out. Even journaling is super eye-opening. And you want to be super honest with yourself here. Like, do I sound excited about this thing? Or do I sound like I'm trying to convince someone? Hearing yourself speak, letting yourself speak is so powerful for you. One of the important things for the self-projected projector is to realize you have to own your voice. You have to live your truth because you naturally have this strong sense of direction. When you share your process, it gives other people their sense of direction as well. And if you are friends with a self-projected projector, be a good listener. It's like, you can just come to me and I'll just listen and reflect it back to them. Be like, hey, this is what I think I hear you say, dot, dot, dot. And that will be tremendously helpful. The next one is environment authority. So this is only available to mental projectors. So this is very, very rare. And the chart might say no authority. That means you are meant to take in information from your environment. You are meant to really be picky about your environment. Do you feel good? Do you like this place? Do you like the city? Do you like the bedroom you're sleeping in? Do you like the people around you? The mental projector only has two defined centers out of nine centers. So they take in a lot from other people and the places they go. So if they are with the right people in the right places, then they will literally thrive. Let's say you are going to grad school and is in a different city, you've never been there, it is so healthy for you to visit, literally go there, take in the space, feel into it, give yourself time to get to a point of clarity. And when the clarity comes, it's going to be super obvious. Be really picky, allow yourself to be that way. Because again, you become your environment. The whole thing with, oh, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with, that is true for you times like 500. So be really like, ask yourself, be really honest. Do I want to become this? Like the self-projected projector, it is so healthy for you to talk it out too. And if you feel like, oh, I don't want to take in, I don't want to be like a sponge for my environment, your lesson is to trust the openness and that the open pieces get information. You are literally, you have the freedom almost to choose what you want to become. And when the environment is right, things are more likely to go well. Your grad school experience is going to be very enjoyable. You will meet the right people. The universe is going to bring you the opportunities that are in alignment. So this is very much feeling into it, sensing into it, taking all the time you need. And if you feel uncomfortable about that, it is just how you process things. Own that. Last but not least is waiting for the lunar cycle. And that is for the reflector, which we talked about in episode two. This is basically allowing yourself to have the patience and surrendering to how clarity is going to unfold over the 28 days. In the last episode, we talked about how reflectors experience 
identity shifts over the lunar cycle. One day you feel like a generator, the next day you feel like a manifester. So you basically, with all these different identities, how do they feel about whatever decision? If you're going to move to a different city, are all these different sides of you going to like it? Again, your pace is very different from other people and it's about owning it. Like, hey, this is just how I work. I take my time on things and I feel into them. And think about a time when you were forced or you felt pressured, rushed into a decision. How did that turn out? Did you learn your lesson there? You know, that's how we build trust. And if you're a reflector, you can actually print out a transit chart on genetic matrix. And you can reach out to me if you want to do that. It is just a helpful tool to help you navigate as a reflector. Well, learning about my own authority really clarified how I was supposed to make decisions because going back to the shopping example I talked about, guess who experienced that firsthand? And it just goes to show how each of us is actually different and not one is better than the other. Sacral authority people are meant to really feel into their bodies and trust that, making decisions pretty real time. That is their magic. And other people are meant to really take time with their big decisions and feel into how things can play out given all the circumstances. Also, if you know the inner authority of your partner or your kids, family, friends, co-workers, this one is a game changer for having better relationships with people, respecting how they process and how do they make their decisions? What is their strongest inner voice? You don't have to be like, hey, you're self-projected. So I'm going to, you should talk to me about all your decisions, but just, you can just ask them, oh, how did that make you feel? How did you experience that? And if they're emotional authority, definitely encourage them to sleep on their decisions. And if they're sacral authority, maybe they're saying yes to something, but their body language is saying otherwise, encourage them to tune in. So you get the point. This is really fun. I would love to hear how do you resonate with your authority. You can let me know on Instagram. I am at Sandy Yang Wellness. Send me a DM. I would love to hear from you. And yeah, again... The three biggest pieces in human design are type strategy and authority. So listen to episode two if you need a refresh and this one is important too. And send it to a friend. I love learning from the podcast that my friends tell me about. And if at this point you're like, I want to know everything about my human design or you can see how this applies to you and you would like some tips and support in integrating your human design to your day-to-day, definitely, absolutely enter the giveaway. Again, the instructions to enter are in the show notes. If you're ever like, um, I don't ever win a giveaway, I would encourage you to just enter because there might be a surprise. Anyways, good luck everyone and I will talk to you soon. Bye!